Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. So I've been asked a bunch of times to go over the makeup products that I use. Um, I made a couple videos for makeup and then deleted them just because like uploading them to YouTube was a pain in the butt. Um, and I have a really good internet connection. Maybe I was doing it wrong. I don't know. But so today what I'm going to do instead of doing a makeup tutorial, I'm just going to go over some products that I use on not necessarily a daily basis. I'll tell you if I use it on a daily basis, but um, just some of my favorite products. And so it's time to sit and drink some coffee. And I figured that I would drink coffee and do this because I've always wanted to do YouTube videos, even though I don't think I have a YouTube voice. I don't think I have a YouTube face or anything interesting to talk to or about really. So, but anyway, and Problem is, I ramble. We're a minute into the video and I've literally not done anything other than take up a minute of your time. Anyway, so what I wanted to do was go over, um, this is my snack for coffee. And if you guys don't eat snack wheels back from the old school, you're missing out. Um, so I use a lot of stuff that you can buy at a drugstore and I use a lot of stuff that you can only get at like Ulta or Sephora. I prefer Ulta. Um, so, usually what I start with, if I'm doing a full face, is a primer. This is a really good alternate to like a, an expensive primer. This comes from a drugstore. I actually got it at Ulta, but you can get it at Walmart or Rite Aid or CVS or wherever. Um, it's the CoverGirl Simply Ages Anti-Aging Foundation Primer. I think it was like seven bucks. Um, it goes on really smooth. It doesn't really have a smell or anything like that and um, it is really comparable to a lot of the high-end primers and I was really really satisfied with it um, if I'm gonna do a full face of makeup which I don't do a whole lot in the summer um, like right now I'm just wearing concealer and bronzer um, I use this this is my all-time most favorite foundation that's like $40 per container this is my winter super white girl color um, but it doesn't cake, it's not, like it doesn't look like you're super done up and it doesn't look super light, it's matte, it doesn't get greasy, it doesn't cause breakouts. Um, and just so you know, I have my laptop here, but um, you can go on a website called causedna.com, C-O-S-D-N-A. Um, and when you first bring it up, it has kind of a really generic out look in the front of it. Um, it's like a pink, like a pink box and the title at the top is blue with black letters and the O, or the o has a yellow thing in it and it's got a little couple like makeup bottles and stuff in it. But you can literally type in the name of your product like Tarte Amazonian Clay. And when you bring that up, it will bring up a whole bunch of products. You can get even more specific and go back in there and add full coverage foundation. Let's do that. Full coverage foundation. And it will literally bring up the product that you're looking for. Now, what this does, it has SPF 15 in it, for instance. Uh, what this does is it will tell you um, the safety aspects, the irritant aspects, and the acne aspects of it. So, what you're looking for is anything over like a 4 or 5 and the, the, the acne section is what I pay attention to because I have acne prone skin. So I pay attention to the acne section. Um, this one actually has one thing in it, potassium chloride that is uh, for viscosity control and it's actually labeled a five in the acne section. Uh, this has never particularly broken me out. So I ignore that particular part of that. So when I'm making my decisions on what to buy, I'm in the store and I'm like, I wanna try something new. So I'll pull it up on my phone on cause DNA, I'll type it in. And I'll look and see if it has anything in the acne column that's anything over like a four. That's what the website says. Anything over a four is pretty good chance that it's going to cause you to break out. This does not. So I go on what I know. I go by what I know as evidence-based practice. I go that I know this does not break me out. It never has. So I ignore that. I forego the information that they've given me. And I just do it anyway. But on a general basis, you would probably want to pay attention to that. Um, but anyhow, another, this one is another one that I really like. This is also Tarte. I'm going to scoot this back over. 
Um, this is the um, the Tarte BB Tinted Treatment Primer. It's bleh, really primer. It's got an SPF 30 in it. Um, a lot of the times I can use this. This goes on like a clay almost, like it's really matte. Um, a lot of the times I can use this as just like a base for, I'll do this and then I'll put some concealer just to dot over like if I have a, a breakout um, certain times of the month or just, you know, whenever. I'll use this as kind of a, a base and sometimes I don't need anything more than this at all. This is really good for summer because it's a darker color. Go lay down. It's a darker color so I can use it a lot of the time for you know summertime if I'm going to the pool or if I'm going swimming and I need to lay down or I need to lay out in the sun and I don't want my skin to get sunburnt on my face which my face never tans hardly anyway so I've given up on that and I've just went on the lines of I'm just going to protect my skin so I don't get super super wrinkly when I get older yeah it was like $30 um I did get it at Sephora you can get it at Ulta or wherever um order it online what have you but that's a good option for me if I'm gonna go be in the sun in the summer and I don't want to wear a lot of makeup or look like I have a lot of makeup on yet I kind of want to protect my face because sunblock just breaks my face out altogether like I can't use it this is another really cheap option of something like that except for this is more it's less matte than the Tarte this is more of a glowier um, dewier look this is the Rimmel Insta Flawless Perfecting Radiant Skin Tint notice the word radiant and all this on here yeah it's a little shinier um it's got an spf 15 it says natural looking glow 24 hour moisturization primes and perfect this is the medium dark this is the one i wear in the summer um it's like six or seven dollars i get it at walmart um i've looked it up on cause dna it's good to go it doesn't cause and i know for a fact that in, in the past i've used it and it didn't break me out so um but i usually always go through all my most used products like once or twice maybe once a quarter and look and see if any of the new updates on the products have added anything in the acne column on cause DNA just because I'm a paranoid patty um, and now on to concealers there are a few that I use these are my most used concealers um, this NYX full or NYX full coverage concealer um, I've looked this one up before it uh, before it had something in a four on the acne column on cause DNA now it does not like the newest updated one doesn't have that so i continue to use it again evidence-based practice i know this doesn't break me out for the most part um this is the color medium um it's eight or nine dollars lots of walmart's have mix now um this is maybelline fit me concealer um in medium it's not a really flashy bottle so there's not really much i can show you um this is a liquid one with a little brush on it like this um, it's really good. I kind of just, I take it and I'm just wiping it all over my face and I use, this is my concealer brush. Um, I use it, this is an, either an It Cosmetics or a, an Ulta brand. I'm not really sure because it's worn off. I've had it for so long, so I just clean it and I use it and I, and I, you know, I just do this when I use it for concealer. And this, um, is another cheap alternative, NYX HD Studio Photogenic Concealer. And this one is... Fresh beige. This is a darker color, so this is not a winter color for me. Nonetheless, these two are really good. They're the same concept. It has that same type of brush, um, and I would do the same with it. I would just swipe it on, and then I would kind of go through here and pat this. That's just something like I'm literally running out to the store, and I don't want to do anything else. I'll put on some glasses or something to make me not look like a complete homeless weirdo. Um, that's what I use for that. Uh, moving along to like eyebrows for instance um, and it's no secret that I've had my eyebrows microbladed now that was a couple years ago uh, we're coming up on two years actually so there's not much microblade left there's more than what I thought there would be um, but I do have to fill them in um, my brow artist moved so I just haven't really gotten you know haven't, and, and it's really expensive, just truthfully. But um, this is the NYX Micro Brow Pencil. This is my absolute favorite. This is the color Ash Brown, or chocolate. I prefer the color Ash Brown, but they don't stock it very much in my Walmart. So, uh, and it's, I think, eight or nine dollars. You can also find it on Amazon every now and again, and Ulta has it. It just is like a mechanical, like you twist it up and down, and it also has a spoolie on the end for combing those brow hairs. Uh, not necessarily cheaper alternative, but if I'm desperate and I really need to use something else, one time I ran out and couldn't get any, so I went and got this CoverGirl, uh, soft brown 
ultra fine brow pencil. It is really the same concept and it's very comparable. However, it's a lot darker and it goes on more like a coal liner than a pencil. So it, it just have to be not so heavy handed with it. But overall, it's a good product nevertheless. Um, for eyeliner, I didn't bring my actual coal eyeliner in here, but I prefer a coal eyeliner, just not like a pencil or one that you can kind of screw up or whatever, just to, to line my waterline and basically what they call tight line. Um, it's very difficult for me to say my eyes like that because I'm a hillbilly. So I really want to say tight line, but then I'm going to be like, who is going to understand me or who is going to make fun of me? Anyway, um, as far as for like liquid liner goes, which I don't do a lot, like if I have, I have eyelash extensions, so I don't do a lot of uh, liquid eyeliner just because it's harder to get off and it's kind of damaging to the lashes um, to try to scrub that off of there. So I, I try to not do it unless I'm really, really going all out as far as like full face makeup going out like something fancy. But I use the NYX uh, Epic Ink Liner in black. So it's a felt tip. This is the only liquid eyeliner that I can do without it looking like I let my three-year-old do it. Just is what it is. Now, when I don't have lash extensions, which that day is coming here pretty soon, I'm just gonna give my lashes a break and do a lift intent with my uh, lash tech. But when I don't do that, I do use, these are the two mascaras that I've found that are the best. This is Better Than Sex by Too Faced, and I don't use waterproof just because it's so hard to scrub off your lashes and I feel like it pulls mine out. Um, and besides, I don't, I'm not a crier, so it's not really a big deal. Um, when I was doing, when I was flying, uh, I would sweat a lot in my face, <laughs> obviously, like literally dripping. So in the day before I had taken any of my makeup off, even this regular mascara held up to the heat and me sweating and so on and so forth. And it didn't run or anything. So, um, it, occasionally I would have to go and kind of just do this and, you know, kind of wipe like a little bit of smudge off or whatever. Um, this you can, I mean, it's just a brush. It looks kind of clumpy, but it's probably because I haven't used it in forever. And this one's almost empty. I had been using like a sample just because I just didn't feel like going to the store. Um, and a comparable one to this is the NYX Worth the Hype Volume and Lengthening Mascara. And this is just in black. Like I use a lot of NYX products, probably next to Morphe. NYX is my favorite brand. And Tarte is obviously, uh, those are my three most used brands. Com completely honestly, like if I had to give up anything and everything from every other makeup brand, uh, if I could just make sure that I had NYX and Morphe and Tarte, I would be fine. But it has, you can see it has a similar brush. Uh, it takes like one or two more coats than the better than sex does, but this is also like $6 as opposed to 20 something. Um, so it's a good alternative. Um, so now on to lips. I mean, I'm kind of going, no, we'll do eyeshadow because it's kind of out of order. I'm, I'm dumb. So this is just an old classic. Like I'm sure you guys are fully acclimated to the naked palette. That's just something that I always keep in my arsenal just in case. Uh, but Morphe is by favorite, uh, by far my favorite. I just can't talk. Like I should have probably picked a day that I could talk to do a YouTube video. Um, this is just, um, this one is the Jaclyn Hill Dark Magic palette. This is definitely a um, fall slash winter palette. Um, I, I wear a lot of neutrals just because I do. And this palette is the 9C Jewel Crew palette from Morphe. This is kind of a year round type thing. It's dirty. And this is my favorite and you'll see because I've used a lot. This is the Morphe 30 or 350. Um, and these are so affordable. Like this whole thing, I think they're like $20 or $30, but look at all, look at all the colors. Some of them are shimmery, um, not sparkly, but just shimmery. And some of them are matte. Um, I've used the crap out of it. I just recently got this one. This is 35 M as in Mike Morphe. Um, the, these colors are awesome. There's a couple more that I want that I don't have. Um, this is kind of a year-round one as well. There's just a lot less neutrals in there. Um, but definitely lots of things you can work with. Like, you can make any look with any of these. 
Um, those are my go-tos. I have several others, but those are just my favorites. Um, now, as far as lips go, I don't have a whole lot of examples because I don't wear lipstick like every day. Like, I just forget. And the one that I wear the most is in the car. It's in my purse. It stays in there. It's actually my sexy mother pucker. Um, I don't remember the color. But this was always my go-to before I found Sexy Mother Pucker. It's actually what I have on now. It was just on the table. And I'm like, oh, I'll just put it on now since I'm doing a video. It is Urban Decay Rush lipstick. Um, it's just this kind. Like, I don't wear lip glosses. And I don't wear a lot of liquid lipsticks because they break me out. No, I didn't check it on Cause DNA. But I know that they break me out. So I don't care what Cause DNA says. Um, this is NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the color... Um, I don't know how to say that word. C-A-N-N-E-S. I know it's a place, but I'm not saying it because I'll butcher it and then you guys will make fun of me. Um, so it's a similar color. Like I tend to stay with the same colors because like I feel like some lipstick makes me look like a straight up hooker and some of it just makes me look like trailer trash. So, um, but the one that everybody asks me about is always the NYX lip lens launch. <laughs> lip lingerie like i'm trying to read this exactly as it's spelled i just don't even know yes my cup says what you think it says and i've had it online for 100 million times but anyway uh this is french made this is one of my favorites it is one of the only liquid lipsticks that i can use that doesn't break me out um it's pretty dark i have probably three or four of these in similar shades I haven't found a lot of the, the NYX lingerie ones that I'm crazy about here in the last little while, so I've not bought any new ones. Um, a super cheap alternative, like at Walmart, is the uh, this one that I have here. I can't remember what brand it is. Um, color Sensational, but what brand? And the color is 545 Beige, and it's a matte lipstick. I think it's... CoverGirl, but a neutral. I actually wore that in my pictures that we did on our honeymoon. It doesn't, it literally doesn't say it anywhere, but um, Maybelline finally saw it in the fine print. Um, yeah, that's a good cheap alternative, and I really like it. I like matte colors, um, especially in the winter. Um, and as far as on my actual face, right now, this is the bronzer that I've been using. I did get it from Sephora. It's just a uh, Fiji medium is uh, with a little bit of shimmer. It's, I mean, there's not a huge amount of shimmer in it, um, but there's enough. It's just, I, I looked it up on Cause DNA too. There's nothing bad on it. Blush wise, I actually found this at TJ Maxx by Smash, Smashbox LA Lights Blush and Highlight Palette. It has... Rich Berry, True Berry, and Highlight Berry in it. So, Highlight Berry, True Berry, Rich Berry. To me, I feel like that's backwards. So maybe this is Highlight Berry, True Berry, and Rich Berry. Either way, uh, I do use this a lot, as you can see. And honestly, I don't use just one. I take, this is what I use for uh, found, er, bronzer and blush. And this is a Ulta Beauty powder brush. I actually just do all of them at the same time. Uh, and then I use this brush. This is a Luxie 660 Precision Foundation brush, which I've never put foundation on with it, but um, to do a highlight. And this is my most favorite go-to highlight, the uh, Benefit Dandelion Twinkle. It's such a pretty feminine, sweet little color. I don't know if you can even see that or not, but it's, it's so cute. And I use this and I just kind of lightly brush it where it goes. Um, for foundation, I did find a brush that I actually liked, and of course, it's by Morphe. It's the M444. I'm, like I said, I don't wear a lot of foundation um, in the summer, so uh, I have a lot of other small brushes. My most go-to brushes, though, I have for like just one color eyeshadow for like your base color or to go over at the end. Uh, one of them is a Lexi 205 Tapered Blending, and the other one is a Morphe brush that came in a kit. It does not have a number, but it came in a kit. Both of them are pretty similar. That's for just like your first coat or finishing. Um, for doing my creases and kind of making like a line, this is my most favorite one. It's an angled brush. It's a Lexi 207 Medium Angled Shading Brush. 
And for like the corners, if I wanna go in with a darker color, I have a couple that I use that are my favorite. Um, this Glamour Dolls, a lot of these Luxie brushes, the Glamour Dolls, anything other than the Ulta and the Morphe, I got in um, Ipsy bags when I used to get those. Uh, but this one is the one that I'll use for like darker colors in the corner. And this is a smudge tash by, I don't know what brand that is, but it came in an old, and it came in a uh, Ipsy bag. And for like a highlight, if I want to go in with a white color and do just my arches here, just so that they kind of stand out or in the corner and in the corner or whatever, um, I use a Morphe M321. Those are my go-to brushes. Um, if I'm doing eyeshadow, I'm using at least, like if, if I travel, like just recently when we went to New Hampshire, this is what I took with me. Just these. So, base and finish, highlight, dark color, crease. And I can, I can live with that. I have some other ones, but those are my favorites. Um, this is another little, um... Elizabeth Mott blending brush. I will use it for the corners sometimes too, but I kind of reserve it for the funky colors. As you can see, it's got some kind of reddish pink on it. Um, that way I don't have to wash it off. So I use it, for, I kind of reserve it for some of the more funky stuff. Um, so that's like my go-to makeup stuff. And we're at 21 minutes. I was trying to keep this under a half hour because I know everybody doesn't have all day to sit around and watch me, you know, blender about stuff that I really don't know about. Um, okay. So along with makeup, I have to have a way to take it off and a way to keep my face clean. So, um, every night before bed, sometimes as soon as I get home, I use these. This is, this kind of stuff is where I really use Cosine because if anything's going to break me out, it's probably going to be the stuff that I wash and the stuff that I leave on my face like overnight. That's when my face produces oil. That's just how things work. Makeup, CeraVe, Cera, CeraVe, I'm not sure how you say it. I haven't Googled it. Look at that. Don't even have any of my teeth up. Um, but anyway, they're ultra gentle. They have ceramides in them, um, just like all the CeraVe stuff does. And there's 25 in here and they're like $6. That is a staple. Now, the other day I bought a Cetaphil brand makeup remover just like this. I was in Charleston. My bags got, or, um, I got stuck overnight there. Thank you, American Airlines. Um, I'm gonna say this again, never again. Anyway, I got stuck there. So I bought those. They didn't have the CeraVe ones at that Walmart. Um, I walked like three miles to get to the stupid Walmart to begin with. So I bought Cetaphil thinking, well, you know, Cetaphil's all good skincare, blah, blah, blah. Well, those things, when I looked them up on Cause DNA, prove me if I'm wrong, it's the CeraVe makeup removing cloth crazy amount of acne causing and irritant stuff in there i'm like okay well that explains a lot because when i used those i probably had three zits pop up the next freaking day anyway i digress about talking trash about products because that's not what i'm all about but still so after i do that i go and i wash my face with just plain dial hand soap like i use either the bar or the pump doesn't really make a difference. Uh, my friend, my best friend Lindsay told me about this a long time ago and we've been kind of using it since. I think she uses all CeraVe products now, but I went um, off the dial train for a couple months back in the winter and my skin got horrible again and which that may have been some hormone stuff from, you know, being pregnant and having a miscarriage and so on and so forth back in February. But um, nevertheless, I stick to what I know works. So I went back to the dial. Plus it's like a dollar for a thing. So I'm like, I'm good with that. But, um, that's what I use to wash it off. I pat dry with a towel. I cannot stress enough not to rub your freaking face. Um, after that, I didn't even bring it in here. Oh my God. Um, it's Dickinson's Rose Water Toner. It's basically witch hazel with rose water. And even the regular Dickinson's witch hazel is incredible. It's five or six dollars. It comes in a big bottle, like big as my head. I've looked it up on Cause DNA. It's good. Obviously it's witch hazel, like there's nothing in it so good for it. i use like the little cotton rounds they're like this big so i just put it on there and i wipe my face and it also helps it to dry a lot quicker so after that um i always put on my curology my uh prescription is for me only uh, this is actually my original prescription from like 2018 or 2017 or something like that because i 
I fell off the Curology wagon for quite some time and it's because I think my prescription was wrong and my hormones changed and just a lot of things went wrong. So I blamed a lot of it on Curology, which I will say that their face wash and their moisturizer did not work for me. It made my skin explode. I've also heard that from several other people. So again, let's stick into what you know. Uh, my dermatologist, uh, my dermatology provider, she is a uh, nurse practitioner. Her name is Adele Nicholas, and she works for Curology. So she's the one. They have all told me about uh, cause DNA. They've all told me about all these extra things that you need to be doing with your skin. And, you know, I even thought, well, my vitamin C serum is breaking me out. It wasn't that because I looked it up on cause DNA too. And, and they have been like 100 for 100, like 100% accuracy on what breaks me out. So I'm sticking with them and eliminating products. And here recently I eliminated a few things that I knew were breaking me out. According to Cause DNA, guess what? I've not really been breaking out anymore. Not like I had. It's almost all cleared up, except for just the old marks that are healing from the last couple months. So, anyhow, um, after I use the thin layer of that, I'll let that dry. Um, if I'm doing vitamin C, I do not do it every day. I can't do it every day. They recommend starting out uh, every other day. But... Um, it just, it says every other night, obviously. Um, and there's an order in which you should do things. Um, if you'll look up Jordan Harper, nurse practitioner on Instagram or on Facebook, she has a lot of good information. She's also, um, I don't dermaplane right now because my skin has been breaking out too much around my chin over, you know, historically over the last few months I had to stop dermaplaning, which, um, I think I could start back in a few spots, but like right now I'm just staying away from it. But her information is so helpful. And this is one of the ones that I know that she recommended. This is just Mario Badescu uh, vitamin C serum. All of their stuff is great. This is obviously good to go on um, cause DNA. I, I blamed it on that, but it wasn't the vitamin C serum. I mean, my skin may have had a purge getting used to vitamin C, but it was also a lot of other things. So I started just putting it here. I don't put it on my chin. I just put it here and just kind of everywhere else but my chin because my chin is my real problem area. So I would even put it down here. So, you know, like, I don't know if I just, like I'm gonna have an old lady turkey neck. There's a bump there. So I think it's causing my skin to stretch out. Either that or, I don't know, whatever. Um, so after that dries, you would want to do your acne medication. If you had any kind of treatments or whatever, you would want to do them after your vitamin C. So you would want to wash, tone, any kind of serums like vitamin C or, or others. Then you would want to do any kind of treatments like acne or whatever. And then, and only then, after that, everything has to dry in between. And I can put some links in the comments of uh, like cause DNA and the order in which your products are supposed to go and yada yada. Like then and only then would you apply your moisturizer. Right now, this is what I'm using as um, came recommended by Faye Brock. Of course, I obviously uh, caused DNA it before I bought it. Uh, it's hyd Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel with Hyaluronic Acid. Um, I love Hyaluronic Acid. They have a mask, like a sheet mask, that's the same stuff. It's just like a big dose of the same stuff, and it is amazing. This is like $17, but it's well worth it. Like, you need so very little to... You can't really see it, but you need so little to actually use on, like, literally a dab on your finger. Um, and then after that dries, I use this. I've used this for a couple years now. It's just the Mario Badescu facial spray with aloe herbs and rose water. Very mild, obviously okay on cause DNA, but it feels so good. Like, I would recommend carrying a little bottle of it around and whatever you carry on a daily basis, especially if it's hot, because it literally feels like an orgasmic rain shower just happened on your face. Um, after all that, if I need it or after I wash my face in the morning, cause my morning routine is similar, except for when I wake up, I put my hair up out of my face. I wash with the dial soap, lukewarm. I do the toner and then I do my moisturizer if I feel like I need it. Sometimes I don't because sometimes my makeup, like if I'm using this as my base, um, or that, um, uh, this cover girl, simply ageless, I won't do a moisturizer because those are moisturizing on their own. Um, this is to be done after all your treatments and before your makeup, and it's really good. It's Dr. Brandt's Needles No More No More Baggage Eye Depuffing Gel. Um, I like it pretty good. It's a weird color. You just squirt a little bit out, and then you rub it between your fingers, and you just dab it on your eye bags, which you can see I have not done it today, but it works really well, and I don't know how much it is because this came in my Fun box. Um, yeah, and so 
As far as treatments go, other than my Curology, like if I have an acute breakout that I really wanna take care of, uh, this is one of my go-tos. This is the Mario Badescu drying lotion. It smells really weird. Um, this is to be used before bed. After cleansing and toning, you dip a co or like cotton swab, a Q-tip down in here in this sediment stuff. You're not supposed to shake it or anything. You're just supposed to leave it sitting. And I mean, it can be turned over and moved and stuff, but the key is to have that sediment in the bottom and you dip your Q-tip in it. Um, and you put it in the pink sediment and you dab it directly on whatever blemish you have. And this works best on blemishes that have either came to a head already or that you have already popped, so on and so forth. Um, it says not to use it on broken skin. It just freaking hurts. But I can tell you that it will dry it up really fast. Um, it doesn't do a whole lot for the redness, but it does dry it up. Like if you have one that's came to a head and you know that it's going to be a monster in the morning, put that on it and it works really well. Another thing that has been an absolute miracle for me, I'm going to save for last. Um, this is something that I've came up on new that came in my Fab Fit Fun Box. It's the Generation Clay uh, Brightening Purple Clay Mask, Ultraviolet. I don't know how much this is um, normally, but it refines, brightens, illuminates, and nurtures. It's You put just a layer on your skin, leave it for 10 minutes. It's a clay mask, so when it starts to dry, you wash it off. It really feels nice, um, and it, it does leave your skin looking really good. Definitely a good product, especially to get in a Fit Fun box that I pay $49 for every three months. Um, these, okay, so these are my arsenal. Like, I thought... Well, I'm putting these on here and it's making my zits worse because I was getting a zit around a zit I already had and a zit and a zit, but it was the other stuff I was doing. Uh, but, but these are literally a lifesaver. They are $2, $3 at Walmart. Um, they're by Hanhu Blemish Patches. They are a non-medicated hydrocolloid spot treatment. These are good. Um, they're a trans transparent hydrocolloid patch that target impurities without drying out the surrounding area. Individual adhesive patches absorb excess pus and oil, minimizing the appearance of blemishes while acting as a protective cover. Easy peel backing design allows for sanitary application. Safe for daily use. And you can see on the back here, it kind of gives you a little idea. Okay, so, like, obviously you want to wash your face first, dry first, tone first. It says to not, it says don't use this in combination with other medicated products or treatments. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Like, if I have a bump that's just so freaking bad, I'll put my Curology on and put this on. But I haven't noticed whether it works less or more when you combine it. But my trick. So, I suffer from cystic acne. So, my acne is not a bump that I'm just going to go pop and it's going to crust up and go away. No, no, no. These things are under the skin. They literally make all the skin around them painful. Like this under my neck came up when I was in New Hampshire and it's so gross and I'm so gross and everybody's gonna think that I'm the nastiest thing ever. But I mean, it, like they literally, one came up was so sore, it felt like I had a knot in my throat. Like, but that's not what it was. It was literally as it. And the same thing on like my chin, I'll get them here. Most of the time they're just here. Sometimes I'll get one here. But like they were here and here and here and like they're so sore, like my whole face is sore. My husband's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, my freaking face hurts. I hate it. Like not that he asked, but just the freaking soreness. So, and I've not found anything that made that totally go away. Like even when my skin was at its best with Curology, I would still get a cystic acne bump every now and again. It's a hormonal thing, especially due to the location that mine are, you know, the T-zone, anything around the mouth and lips is hormonal as crap. So, I'm by no means telling you to try what I do. Just keep that in mind. But what I do, what works for me, is I make sure to wash my face with a dial. That helps get rid of a lot of germs. Um, use witch hazel or the toner that I use. Clean, clean, clean. Obviously, that area is clean. I take an 18-gauge needle. Don't ask me where I got it. And I poke that bump. And a lot of times, these things are so big that, I mean they're huge by the time and they're not going to pop like you can squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and they will not pop because they are under the skin under a couple layers of it it's not going to happen like maybe after a week it'll pop i've had bumps that i have purposely ignored just to see how long they would stay without popping and they last weeks i've had one there for a month before that never popped and was sore the whole freaking time i'm like my whole face is going to rot off if i don't get rid of this so lately i've been nipping them in the bud if i feel one coming up i'll get that and i'll clean I'll get the needle. Obviously, I do reuse the needle. However, I sanitize it in between. I cannot stress enough. If you're going to do this, I'm not telling you that you should. In fact, I'm telling you that you should consult a doctor first. However, really, he's squeaking a toy and it sounds really weird. Um, 
if you're gonna do it, clean your freaking tools, just like you would if you were a nurse in a hospital or doing any kind of other procedure. Clean your stuff either with fire or alcohol or an autoclave if you have one. Um, so, yeah, clean needle, nip it in the bud, literally take it, pinch the skin, poke the needle into it just until you can feel it pierce the skin. It doesn't really hurt because the thing's so freaking sore by that time anyway. And when you pinch something, it kind of just doesn't hurt anyway. Same concept with piercing, anything like that when they always hold the skin taut or whatever. If you pinch it, poke it, like if you get a shot, sometimes we pinch the skin up to give insulin shots. Um, I suppose that you could use a smaller needle. Uh, I wouldn't go over an 18 because if you go over an 18 gauge, you're going to risk making a little scar. I haven't gotten any scars from these yet because I barely poke the tip of that needle in there. I'm really careful about what I do. So a lot of it's going to be blood because the face is very vascular. Ever got a cut on your face? It bleeds for 63,000 days. So a lot of your first, I usually have a little piece of toilet paper or a Kleenex laying around. A lot of your first things is going to be blood. And then 98% of the time, what I find is that the pus will come after that. And you'll get immediate relief from that. It's ridiculous how immediate the relief is. So at that point, after I'm done doing face surgery, I'll use one of these. I'll get it cleaned off again. I'll keep my little round with the witch hazel on it. I'll swap over that again, make sure it's clean, make sure it's dry. Put one of these patches on. And you'll notice in about four or five hours, there will be like um, white. The patch will turn white. Wherever it's absorbing impurities, it's going to turn white. And I'm telling you that that thing sucks whatever you didn't squeeze out of that bump. Legit. Like if I would have taken a picture the other day, like I caught one really early, poked it, put the patch over it. The next morning, it was the, the area was white. I pulled the patch off and there was yellow pus in there. Like no joke. And I read this on the internet. Somebody else did this. I was like, holy crap. Somebody else was doing exactly what I was really wanting to do with these things. I mean, the next morning, the thing is almost completely flat. The redness is almost completely gone. And it usually gives you like a little bit of a covering on it because those, if you've popped them or even if you haven't popped them, they're super notoriously hard to cover with makeup. Um, so it gives you a really, really good heads up on popping cystic acne. Like it's super handy. Um, that's what I do. Now, sometimes it requires doing it more than once. Sometimes I might have to do it two nights in a row because sometimes I might pick at it throughout the day and cause it to get dirty again. And I might have to do it, you know, again that night, but, uh, not always, but most of the time it's a one-time thing and I may have to deal with it healing for the next couple days but I don't have days and days and days on end of soreness and cystic acne. So, um, if there's anything else you guys would like to see me do, um, I would do hair products or hair tools or anything like that. Um, that's really the only thing I know anything about and I kind of suck at that too, obviously. Um, but if there's anything else anybody's interested in having a little coffee chit chat about that's, 40 freaking minutes long. Like, really, though? Why do I talk that much? <sighs> this is not a secret. But whatever. Anyway, if there's anything else you guys would want to talk about, anything else you want to know, feel free to comment. I can give you links. I can give you information. I'm going to post this to my Facebook. And because I know just so many people have asked me about makeup products and asked to do a video and to do a tutorial and things. And I haven't done a tutorial, obviously. But... Um, a lot of people have asked me, so here you go. Um, I think that's it. Thanks for watching if you've watched this far, and hopefully this video uploads. <laughs>